Today we've got a 2007 GMC Yukon with a 5.3 engine and about 77,000 miles. The driver brought it in and said that the battery light on the instrument panel comes on now and then. Not all the time, it's fairly intermittent. That's the only complaint right now. Not long ago, he came into our shop and said that the battery would run dead and he had to jump start it a few times. Again, it's got 77,000 miles, it's an 07, it was the original battery, so we did replace the battery at that time. So we know we have a new battery, but we did test it to make sure that the battery is good. In addition to that, we scanned it and we have code PO622, which says that it's a generator F field control fault. Now what does that mean? Well, in this vehicle's case, the ECM directly controls when that alternator turns on and off, and it does it through a pulse width modulated square wave. So what does pulse width modulated mean? Well, basically it means that the alternator is not charging all the time. Instead, it is being cycled on and off as needed to keep the electrical demand and supply as constant as possible. And this is referred to as pulse width modulated or pulsed on and off. The square wave is simply the pattern that we see on the scope that illustrates it being turned on and off. Now here's the diagram for the alternator. Inside it we see we got the generator and the battery. Now the battery of course is going to send power on the red with black wire to the alternator. Now the alternator is bolted to its bracket and on that bracket is where it gets its ground. That ground is going to feed the rectifier bridge and the internal regulator with the ground. Now we have the ECM. You see this is a dotted box. It means there's a lot more here than we're showing, but only showing the, the part for the alternator now. So we've got the generator field duty cycle signal. That is going to go out on the gray wire to the voltage regulator. This is going to be the pulsed signal. It's going to pulse the alternator on and off, on and off. And then the, uh, the regulator is going to send the signal back to the ECM to tell it that the alternator has indeed turned on. Now we know how it's supposed to work, so how do we look for evidence? Well, there are two popular ways, one with a lab scope and one with a scanner in graph mode. They are not the same, but which one is better? Now in this video, I want to highlight how we approach this. I actually used two pieces of equipment. One was the Altel Maxisys scanner, and I've got that plugged in so I can look at the computer data. And then I'm also using the Snap-on Veris, and I'm using the lab scopes so we can actually look at that square wave signal and see what's happening. Now you don't have to have both of these tools to do this test. I'm just using them both for teaching purposes to show that you can use whichever tool you have. Now remember the lab scope will be actually tapped into the signal and the scanner is going to be tapped in through the computer and you're going to be reading PID data. Now I've got my connections on the top of the lab scope and at the alternator, I'm just we're going to back probe at the connector. It's a two-wire connector. Now I've got my scope set on 100 milliseconds, and you can see the duty cycle on and off. If you look at the data down here, maximum 11.7, but we're averaging 6. Point, well, 6.0. Now, when I wiggle this connector down here, you can see I go to zero. I'm still reading 11.7 just dropped to nothing. I wiggle the connector again. Now that's with my hand. Now I just want to change your settings here so you can see if I change my sweep, let's go down to 20 milliseconds. Now you can see the duty cycle on off, on off, and it is varying. The PCM is doing that for charging cycles. Now to make this a little bit more pronounced, instead of I'm going to go my sweep but I'm going to go down here to 10 seconds. In other words, it's going to take 10 seconds to paint this whole thing across the screen. It'll make it a little bit easier to see the problem. Now we're running just fine, and when I wiggle this connector, the signal drops out. Wiggle it again, it comes back in. Wiggle it, out, in, out, in. I'm going to let it just run on its own. 
before I was doing it with my hand, but this is just running it with its on its own. We're out. No duty cycle. The air conditioning just kicked on, still no duty cycle. Now the PCM is seeing this and it knows there should be some duty cycle there. So that's why it's setting this code. Again, if I take my hand and I wiggle the connector, I can get it to come back on just for a second there. Now if I get the connector just in the right place, it'll stay on. I'm going to zoom out so that you can see my hand. We have no duty cycle now, but when I put my hand in here and I wiggle this connector, then it comes on. Take the pressure off of the connector, and it's staying on right now, but it will go out. But when I wiggle that connector, it goes off, on, off, on. Now that's without me doing anything put my hand in here and push on the connector. Now if I get it just in the right place, I can remove my hand and it'll stay in place. Now I'm going to move pan back and show you that I've got my Maxisys Autel over here too. And I've got it set up to graph three things. The top one is the bolt, the middle one is the I terminal, and the bottom one is the F terminal. Now fortunately when I come back you can't hardly see both of these, so I'm going to zoom in on just this. And leave it right there. Now, if you look at my lamp scope you can see that you have plenty of duty cycle. Now I'm going to wiggle the connector. Now you can see that it drops down to zero. When I wiggle the connector, the red line, which is the generator F signal, drops down and has no voltage on it. Now I'm going to wiggle the connector, and boom, it comes right back up. Now if I pan over quickly to the lab scope, you can see that it came back up. Now I'm on the lab scope. I'm going to wiggle it and make it work, and then if I go over real quickly over here, you can see that it came back up on the Altel by graphing it. Now here I'm going to try and catch the lab scope and just the scanner in the graph mode so that you can see them. Now it is generating a pulse width now, but when I wiggle the connector, if you try and watch them both, Just right, I can get it to drop out. You can see on the lab scope we dropped to zero, and so we did on the scanner by graphing the pin. And it comes back on when it's making contact. Wiggle the connector, have a bad connection. You see my hand here is off, so I'm not pressing on the connector. But when I put my hand back in there and press on the connector, we've got our signal back. So when we wiggle this connector and lose our signal, it's because we're breaking the continuity between that signal wire and the contact in the connector going directly to the alternator. No matter which piece of evidence you have, you should be able to catch this evidence if you're using a scanner, you pick the particular data pins that you want to see and you grab them. Or you can use your lab scope and go right to the sensor, right to the wire, and look at it this way. I particularly myself like to use the lab scope because I've got a lot more control over the sweep, the bolt.
fish and everything like that. To me, it's a whole lot more clear that that's where the problem is. So we know that connector at the alternator is faulty. So we've ordered out a new one. We're going to wire in a new connector and go from there. So once again, we look for the evidence and let the evidence lead us to the problem.